This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Neighbor.com, which is a really great idea for rideshare drivers. What if you made an extra $10,000 every year without doing any extra work? You can earn money on Neighbor.com by renting out the space you don't use to people in need of storage or long-term parking. Like if you have a garage, a shed, driveway, or, or parking space, start monetizing it on Neighbor.com. Neighbor is free to use, and unlike your normal 9-to-5 job, Neighbor lets you earn passive income without ever leaving the comfort of your home. Neighbor also protects each host with its $2 million guarantee. So if you're looking for an additional way to earn income, check out Neighbor.com and see how much money your extra space can make you. An extra few hundred bucks each month sure comes in handy as the economy starts to open up and drivers get back on the road. Drive during the day and make passive income on Neighbor while you sleep. If you use the link in the show notes below to list your space, Neighbor will give you an extra $50 when your space gets rented. Neighbor.com is a no-brainer for side hustlers. So visit host.neighbor.com forward slash ride to get started making money today. Again, it's host.neighbor.com forward slash ride. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Ride Share Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right. Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing out there? I'm recording this today. Today is Monday, June 8th. It's about nine in the morning. Mondays are typically the day that I do uh, a lot of recording. I recorded a video for the rideshare guy this morning. That's been uploaded. That'll be coming out tomorrow. And um, today we're going to look at the news. There is a lot going on. And I picked out one, two, three, four, five, six stories uh, to cover today. How you doing out there? So the economy is warming up. Uh, We had a jobs report come out, which made it look like the economy is really coming back. Um, But there's still tens of millions of people who are unemployed. And there's still people who are looking at uh, returning to... to be a rideshare driver and are still concerned about, you know, the health concerns. Uh, So it's an interesting time. I have no plans to return to driving anytime soon. I think things need to get a lot safer before I decide I want to go, you know, risk my, my health driving other people around. Although the opportunity seems to be pretty good because there aren't that many drivers. So more passengers and not many drivers, That's uh, that would uh, be an increase in demand. And some drivers are out there do, doing quite well. But let's, uh, let's jump into the news. Uh, first story, Sacramento Bee. Uh, Gavin Newsom, he's the governor of California, proposes progress for California's unemployment office, but many can't see it. So the video I made this morning was all about my struggles last week trying to call into the EDD, to Gavin Newsom's unemployment office, to get um, a big issue resolved. The big issue was I hadn't gotten any money in about a month. And uh, boy, super, super frustrating, really frustrating. I called, I made over 1,500 calls, um, finally did get it resolved Friday morning. Um, but boy, uh, only cause I, I studied it. I committed to it. You know, I just did everything I could. I took, uh, like 10, 10 hours of my life to, to, to get it done. 
This article starts with, how on earth am I going to survive this, asks Glenn Prasad. The South Sacramento former Uber and Lyft driver has maxed out his credit cards. He pays $2,000 a month rent. He needs his unemployment benefits and so far can't get it, nor can he get what he regards as useful answers from the state's unemployment agency. He gets up every morning and starts calling the Employment Development Department at 7 a.m., an hour before the phone lines open. Every day he's told to try again. Uh, I didn't try calling at 7. I tried calling right at 8 o'clock. Um, and the article goes on to say um, that they're, you know, they're hiring up to 3,000 more people to help with this. And um, it's just very difficult. It's just very difficult. Robert Good, waiting since March 20th. Good took EDD's, EDD's advice and tried to get help online. He's been waiting for constructive answers since March 20th. That's three months ago. He's 65. He's asked six questions on the site. Uh, the site does say you'll get answers in five to seven days. You don't. He tried the uh, phone for the serious potential problem. Um, and then he uh, he just gets told that there's too many calls and to get disconnected. That happened to me a lot. Jacqueline Troberman, 62 calls in a day. That's nothing. I made 94 calls in in nine minutes. So you got to really learn how to dial so that you can uh, increase your numbers. Okay. It's just like anything. It's a numbers game. Um Mark Palmer, this has gone on for weeks now. Palmer, who's in his 60s, he says he's 60-ish, is an independent contractor working in video and photography, earning 20 to 30 a year. He lost all his work. He has no income since March. Um, and he's not been able, he's tried to reach people at EDD for weeks and can't get through. He's written to a state senator. <laughs> this is bad. This is bad. This is what's going on. And Gavin Newsom is making a promise that progress is on its way. Well, we'll see. I mean, it can't get any worse. That's for damn sure. Cannot get any worse. And I got to really feel for the people who are working there. Um, the woman I talked to, her name's Barbara. And you get to talk to these people. And and a lot of people who are calling are just really angry. And uh, I, I made a really... A uh, concerted effort to be very pleasant and really appreciative and really grateful, because as I said, I worked for ten hours to finally get the opportunity to talk to one person who could actually help me. So I didn't want to blow my chance, and 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 it got all it got all worked out. But um, yeah. So tough times, tough times. All right. Next article is from a Business Insider. One third of unemployment benefits have yet to reach Americans. So, and then there's this picture of all these people. This is not in California at some kind of unemployment office in some place. Yeah, nearly one third of the record estimated unemployment benefits owed to Americans who have lost jobs have not yet been paid. So that's crazy, man. That's one out of three people have gotten paid. I'm one of the three. I'm fortunate. But as of yesterday, I was I was two of the three that did not did not get paid. Um, so it's just it's just a completely fucked up situation. Um, so many people lost their jobs, and and these unemployment departments are just doing the best they can to get it worked out. And it's difficult not to just get angry um, at the people at the employment unemployment departments. But they are doing the best that they can. And I guess if you're in a tough situation, you got to remember that so that when you do reach somebody, you know, be pleasant uh, because they're doing the best they can under very, very, very trying circumstances. All right. The next article is from Slate. Here's what happens if Republicans let those $600 unemployment benefits expire. So, um, so those $600 Payments uh, are added to uh, your unemployment money uh, for the months of April, May, June, and July. We just read that only a third of the people who are supposed to get them are getting them. So that means there's a lot of money backed up. And this article uh, is letting uh, Republicans know that letting, letting those expire is not going to be great for the economy, right? Um, it says, uh, but while one might 
not have guessed it based on Trump's surreal Rose Garden touchdown dance Friday. So we had a, a jobs report in May for May that made made it look like the country is in great shape. Um, the country's unemployment problem has not actually disappeared. It's barely budged. As of May 16th, the last date with complete data, more than 29 million Americans were still claiming jobless benefits. That's that's a, that's a lot of Americans. It's not at all clear how soon those people will be able to return to work. Allowing their federal aid to outright lapse would be both cruel and a near-term blow uh, to the economy. So... Uh, the coronavirus relief bill Congress passed in March currently provides Americans who've lost jobs a flat 600 payment on top. Okay, so we covered that. This has irked Republicans. Um, so the Republicans are concerned that there are many people out there who are happy getting their unemployment benefits, so happy that they don't want to return to, to work. Um, and this has irked Republicans, especially Lindsay um, over our dead bodies, Graham, who claimed that it disincentive, disin- disincentives people from going back to work. Well, this may be true to some extent. Friday's, unemploy- Friday's employment report has shown that plenty of people are, in fact, returning to their jobs, despite the ongoing plague and generous aid on offer. Um, so, and what would happen if Congress simply let the payments uh, expire? The average recipient would potentially see a 63% drop in their income. That's according to an analysis. <clears throat> Cutting the federal benefit in half to 300 would shrink the income of unemployed by about one third. Given the number of people who will likely still be out of jobs by summer, that would almost certainly deal a significant blow to consumer spending and slow down the recovery. So the if Say whatever you will about Trump. Um, one thing we can count on with him is that he wants to get reelected. And the best way he's going to get reelected is to have a strong economy. That's his, that's, his, that's his Trump card. That's the one thing that he can point to and say, look, look, I really am good for business. I'm good for the economy. Uh, everyone's you know, prospering. And that would have been a huge, strong story before the pandemic. Now, the pandemic's happened and the economy has tanked. And uh, the argument here is that he's going to do what he has to do uh, to get the economy up and running again. And given that a lot of people are still going to be unemployed, giving them money to spend fuels the, fuels the economy. And therefore, um, I say there's a pretty good chance that there's going to be some kind of a, of a deal made. Uh, to keep money going into uh, the pockets of the unemployed. But we'll have to wait and see. Okay, third story. Lyft reports 26% growth in rides for May as states begin to reopen, but the worst is far from over. So this is a little uh, deceiving because they're comparing, you know, rides in May to rides in April. And the rides were so low so low in April that a 26% growth is such a small number. Um, Still, Lyft said rides are down about 70% compared to a year ago, right? So for every 100 rides last year, now there's only 30, okay? Um, And and the the driving experience, the riding experience isn't nearly as pleasant as it used to be because now you're in a mask, and uh, you got to sit in the back seat and uh, like that. Uh, the next story just confirms what I just shared from the, uh, that other article. This is Bloomberg. It says Uber's ride-hailing recovery comes slowly with business down 70%. All right. So so I don't really understand why dri- the drivers who are driving are saying that demand is up because uh, if only 30 percent of of passengers are are doing rides, and and according to our study, forty percent of drivers are still driving, uh, it would cer- certainly seem like um, it would still be quite slow. So I'm curious. I'm curious. Curious to drive, really. Uh, if I weren't worried about my health, I'd love to go out there for a weekend, um, or even a full week, and see how much I could how much I could earn um, driving in San Francisco. Um, but the bottom line is, uh, it's at 30% of where it was a year ago. 
The last story, uh, what drivers love about driving for Uber and Lyft. It's not just the money. So this is an article from Autoblog. Autoblog uh, was written, it came out today. No, yesterday, June 7th. Yeah. Um, so they, they're saying uh, it's a, a decent part-time income, right? So for me, for four years, it was a decent full-time income, but it's certainly a decent part-time income. Uh, if you want to just uh, say work, uh, I'd say for the last six months I was driving, I was doing primarily Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, and I was able to make about $1,100 driving those three days. So that wasn't so bad, you know? Uh, I could spend the weekend spending money, or I could go drive and clear about $1,000. Not so bad. Driving gives retirees the perfect excuse to get out of the house and talk to people. So, you know, some some retirees are a little bit lonely. They like the stimulation. They want to get out and make a little money, um, not just hang out in the house. Great, I get that. Freedom and flexibility. Well, this is the thing I've often talked about. The most beautiful thing about this is you can work hard and then uh, take take a month off and go... Go to the Philippines, go to Lisbon, go to Morocco, go to Peru, wherever, you know. Um, flexibility is one major draw. Rideshare driving has, has going for it. Many workers are even willing to sacrifice better paying jobs for that flexibility. Uh, for many people, making a living while, of course, a necessity isn't the most important thing in their lives. Making as much money as possible isn't the driving force in their lives. Um, they talk about family, college students. And the last paragraph says, in the end, it is the flexibility and freedom that draws so many millions of people to rideshare driving and other forms of gig work. There are more people today than ever before who care more about people, hobbies, and other interests outside of work than they do about work itself. Rideshare driving gives them the perfect way to devote time to those other things while earning an income at the same time. Yep, I like that. I like that very much. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, interesting. Yeah, this uh, you know this this uh, transition period that we are in right now uh, has has definitely got a lot of people questioning. You know, what's important? What's not important? Uh, where do you want to put focus on in your life? Uh, questions like that. So, all right, everybody, uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, that is a wrap. Uh, fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys rock it every day. I honor you. Thank you for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. Um, next, uh, The next episode uh, will be the last episode of Rideshare Dojo in this current form. Uh, I've been doing this for over a year now. And um, since I'm not driving as much, I've decided to, uh, to give this a break. Uh, the next episode, I'm going to share with you some of the highlights of my career, some of the big lessons I've learned. And um, just tell you about my feelings about what rideshare driving has meant for me and uh, what I see it, uh, what, what my role in it is uh, moving into the future. So be sure and check out that next episode, which will be the last episode of the Rideshare Dojo uh, in its current iteration. All right, y'all go out and have a great day. This is Jay Crater, Nomad Jay, saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.